Thank you all. So I'm Guillaume Dehaene from EPFL, and today I'm going to tell you about expectation propagation and a new intuitive derivation to it, which I believe sheds some light on it, and by showing that it performs uh, what I call a smooth gradient descent. So suppose we want to approximate some probability distribution P of theta, which, given that this is a Bayesian workshop, might be a posterior distribution. I'm going to look at multiple ways to compute Gaussian approximations to this target P of theta. I'm going to look at the class approximation, I'm going to look at variational Bayes, and I'm going to look at expectation propagation. And basically what happens is that Laplace is well understood, but these two guys are a bit more poorly understood. And today I will show that these three are actually very closely linked. <clears throat> so, here is an example of a posterior distribution. The Laplace approximation consists in first finding the maximum, and then fitting a purely local Gaussian approximation at that maximum. So of course this requires us to compute the maximum, which we would do using gradient descent on minus log of t, which I'm going to note psi, okay? And this is a mathematically conservative choice, because on the one hand we've got gradient descent, which is very well understood, and on the other hand we get a theorem telling us that the Laplace approximation is exact if we have a sufficient amount of uh, independently generated data. And the final great feature of that uh, model is that gradient descent speaks to our physical intuitions, because it matches the dynamics of an object sliding down the slope defined by psi. So in this example, you've got the little blue dot sliding from the left-hand side, the little blue dot sliding down from the right-hand side. So now what I want to do is I want to link gradient descent to VB and EP. And the thing is, VB and EP, they iterate Gaussian approximations to the target distribution T. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new algorithm that iterates Gaussian approximations and basically those a variant of gradient descent, okay? So that's this algorithm number one. I initialize it with any Gaussian of my choice, which is zero, and then I have the following loop. So inside this loop, I compute the mean of the current Gaussian approximation, then I compute psi prime and psi second at that mean. This gives me a quadratic approximation to psi, it's the Taylor expansion uh, to second order of psi around mu n. And I take the exponential of that quadratic approximation to log of p, and this gives me a new Gaussian approximation. And I iterate this process, and, uh, and so on and so forth. And the dynamics of this process are purely dictated by the dynamics of the mean. And the mean obeys the following equation, right? And so this equation, we recognize Newton's method. So this algorithm number one is just Newton's method disguised to work uh, with Gaussian iterates instead of point, iter point approximations of the maximum. And it looks like such. So on the left-hand side, you get the classical Newton's method, and it's got a nice intuitive interpretation as we're computing a local quadratic approximation, and we're, we keep on going to the minimum of these quadratic approximations. So here is a little video showing you the dynamics of that. So we keep on iterating these local quadratic approximations and going to the minimum, and we end up computing the, <coughs> the global minimum of the target uh, distribution. And here is algorithm number one on the right-hand side. We're basically uh, doing the same thing, but uh, with the exponential of those quadratics, which is the Gaussians in, uh, in the dotted red line. Okay? And so we keep on iterating this process until we reach a fixed point, which is the Laplace approximation. Okay? So that was algorithm number one, iterating Gaussian approximations until we compute the Laplace approximation. Now let's talk about VB. So VB, we follow the following approach. We first define uh, an energy on the space of Gaussians, and this energy is defined the following way. It's the re reverse kobach leibold divergence uh, between the current Gaussian approximation Q and the target approximation T. And we then seek a local minima of this energy function. And the local minima have an interesting characterization, which is that the expected value under a local minima of psi prime is equal to zero. And this condition here is extremely reminiscent of gradient descent, right? For gradient descent, we'll, we would have psi prime equal to zero instead. And then we also get a condition involving the second derivatives. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define algorithm number two, which will be a slight variant of algorithm number one, but which computes the, the VD Gaussian approximation. And the, the difference between algorithms uh, one and two is highlighted in red, and it's the computation of these local, this uh, linear and quadratic term in my quadratic approximation to psi. Uh, now I'm computing them by computing expected values under my current Gaussian approximation. So, as you can see, these are approximately equal to the values that they had in algorithm number one. <coughs> and uh, to this algorithm, 
computes the VB Gaussian approximation and has a nice intuitive explanation as we're doing the same thing as Newton's method. We keep on iterating these quadratic approximations. But what we do now is at each time step, we also change the, the function of which we're computing the Gaussian approximation to, the quadratic approximation to. So that's why I've called this algorithm smooth gradient descent because this new uh, energy function is computed by smoothing the true energy function with the current Gaussian approximation, okay? So now let's talk about a slight variant to variational rays, which consists in minimizing, instead of the callback LIGO divergence, the alpha divergence, which is defined as such. Once more, the local minima of that have an interesting characterization. So if I've got a local minima Q star, then I have to define this hybrid H star, which is a geometric mean of Q star and of P, then the expected value under H of psi prime is equal to zero. Once more, we've got this condition that is very reminiscent of gradient descent. So this enables me to define algorithm three, which is once more just a slight variant of the other algorithms. So what I've changed now is in each step of the loop, instead of working it with Qn as I did in algorithm number two, I work with this hybrid Hn, which is the geometric mean of Qn and of the target distribution. And uh, I, I've got a bunch of changes compared to algorithm number two. And first of all, note that once again, if we do it with the hands, these values for R and beta are approximately equal to the values they had in algorithm number, number one. And something that's a bit less obvious is that actually the only difference between algorithms two and algorithms three is that every time I had an expected value with Qn in algorithm number two, now I've got an expected value with Hn in algorithm number three. So the only difference is I replaced Qn, which is you know, sort of a poor approximation to P, by a superior hybrid approximation, which is this Hn guy, okay? So I've replaced the poor approximation by a better approximation. And this idea of using these hybrid guys as better approximations to P naturally leads us to expectation propagation. So in order to apply expectation propagation, I have to make an additional assumption that my target P has been factorized into n functions fi, okay? And then what we do with EP is for each fi, we're going to compute a corresponding Gaussian approximation GI, okay? And these GIs, we improve them iteratively according to the classical EP algorithm, which is first, we compute this hybrid HI, which is specific to I, and it's the product of FI times the product of the Gaussian approximations to all the other factors. So this HI is approximately equal to P. Then I compute the mean and the variance of HI and a Gaussian which has the same mean and the same variance. So this guy is an approximation to HI. He's approximately equal to FI times the product of the GJ. And I divide by the product of the GJs, okay? So I remove this GJ term here. I get something that is approximately equal to FI. And that gives me the new Gaussian approximation. This is the classical EP algorithm as presented by Minka. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide an alternative to this classical algorithm, which is based on this idea of doing smooth gradient descent. So the first thing I notice is that factor factorizing P has split my energy landscape psi into additive components as shown in this little schema here. And now what I'm going to do is for each component phi i, I'm going to reuse algorithm number three with the hybrid hi as the smoothing function, okay? So I'm just going to reuse algorithm number three, which computed the, the minimum of the alpha divergence, and this is going to give me my new Gaussian approximation gi. So this is this algorithm number five. So this is basically uh, very close to algorithm number three, I'm first computing this hybrid HI, and all of the steps afterwards just correspond to computing a quadratic approximation to phi i using algorithm number three, and then transforming that quadratic approximation to phi i into a Gaussian approximation to fi, okay? So now we've got a difficult choice to make. On the one hand, we've got algorithm four, a somewhat classical approximate inference algorithm that we know is computationally efficient, but that is also, I would argue, completely unintuitive. And on the other hand, we've got algorithm number five, which is intuitive because I've linked it to Newton's method through this idea of smooth gradient descent, and which is a bit more tractable to analysis. Now, which one should we choose? This is, you know, I want a little image here. This is sort of the same as choosing between this honest looking fellow and this mysterious superhero. That is to say that it's much, not much of a choice because they're actually the same dude. And these two algorithms are actually the same algorithm, just like this one has its superhero costume on, whereas this one looks, you know, uh, like a more 
<coughs> normal algorithm. So let me recap what I've presented today. I've presented today a sequence of four algorithms that were all variants one of, an, uh, one of another. Algorithm one, computing gradient descent. Algorithm two, I added this idea of smoothing, and that computed the variational base Gaussian approximation. Algorithm three, I added this idea of smoothing with a hybrid instead of smoothing with a Gaussian, and that minimized the alpha divergence. And finally, algorithm number five, I had this idea of splitting the landscape into multiple components and of using different smoothings, and this computed the EP approximation. So, <clears throat> what this means is that all of the intuitions we have about algorithm number one, that we have about Newton's method and gradient descent, we can reuse them when we think of EP, because these, these are actually extremely closely related. And also, this might prove to be a path towards empirical improvements of EP by reusing all of the good ideas that op the optimization community has about algorithm number one, and maybe trying them out on EP and seeing if they work. And finally, the last cool feature of this work is, I think this might prove to be a path towards new theoretical results on EP. So, for example, people have assumed for a long time that there is a link between EP and VB, and that in some limits, in some asymptotes, the EP approximation and the VB approximation become asymptotically equal. And now we're going to understand that in a painless manner. So, the only difference between we have between algorithms two and number five is whether we smooth with a single Gaussian approximation or with a cloud of hybrid approximations. Now, if we're in a limit in which that single Gaussian, uh, the, sorry, the cloud of uh, hybrid approximations is asymptotically equal to that single Gaussian, then EP and VB are going to be asymptotically equal, right? And so this exactly happens when we've got a large number of factors fi, and all of these factors are weak in some sense. So when we are in such a limit, then EP and VB are going to be approximately equal. So I hope that this, can, uh, this result can help you understand EP better, and so you can apply it on your own problems, and I thank you very much all for your attention. Gaussian EP, sorry. Yeah. Do you comment on generalizations to other exponential family approximations? So I'm not sure this generalizes very well to other uh, exponential families, but there is, there is a very particular feature with Gaussians. So like you can generalize the Laplace approximation to say computing a gamma thing, and you could generalize gradient descent to that, but I'm not sure this parallel uh, then works uh, for EP. Can you comment a little bit about how uh, feature insights into optimization will help EP as an example? So, I like this is this is not completely obvious because like one feature that we do not get anymore is that gradient descent has an explicit objective function. Even with with this point of view, EP doesn't have an explicit energy function. So some of the insights which we can directly translate, uh, and I'm, I don't know enough about exactly all the optimization stuff. So. Uh, this is also, uh, you know, if anybody knows well about optimization, I would be very interested to discuss this in further detail. It's like the normal line search algorithms we can't use directly, but we need maybe the acceleration schemes would be exciting to use. All right, let's thank the speaker.